So, professionals were asked, what does it really mean to be successful in your career? And the top three answers were to have great career advancement, obviously, to have good work-life balance, surprise, and to do meaningful work. Okay, well, 80% of mid-career professionals also find themselves complaining about organizational barriers that mean that there is no real growth, workloads that are so high that there is hardly any work-life balance, and a lack of autonomy that makes meaningful work rather a dream than a reality. I'm not pretending that I can solve all the career problems in the world in one little video, but what I can promise you is that there are certain traps that we can all fall into that contribute to this dire statistics. So here are five traps and also five ways that can help you to make your career more successful, more meaningful and more balanced. Number one, you get good at things. Things that don't matter. Think back to you as a student. Were you enjoying studying for the things that you were really poor at or did you rather focus on the things that came easy to you? Or in your private life, when you go home and when you have time off, are you focusing on the things that you struggle with or rather the things that you enjoy? Now, the point is this. There is certainly something said for focusing on our strengths and not trying to eradicate every single flaw that we have in pursuit of perfection. But at work, this can lead to us focusing on the things that we are already good at, even if they don't matter that much. Case in point, I love color grading. And I can spend hours or even days just tinkering with those little dials in Da Vinci in the search for the most perfect color for my next video. But if we are really honest with each other, you probably don't care if I look like this or look like this or look like this when what I say wouldn't make any sense because the main thing is the message of the video, right? So sometimes I have to remind myself when all I want to do is tinker with the colors for my next video that I really need to focus on what message I want to convey. And that happens to all of us at work. We get so good at some of the things that we also really enjoy doing that we forget whether they matter to the outcome of the company, to your boss or to the organization, or if they don't. So what can we do? Well, First of all, make a list of 10 things that are really meaningful to your end customer of the company or to your boss. And then make sure that you yourself contribute to at least two or three of those meaningful goals. And all of that makes time for something we often do and need to stop. Number two, prepare for your next role, the one that you actually don't want. There is often a natural progression in our career, such as from worker to supervisor to department head, or maybe from salesperson to marketing executive. For me, my heritage was my downfall, kind of. So I progressed in my career. I went from role to role. I got bigger and bigger responsibilities. And for the most part, I was really enjoying what I was doing. At some stage though, as you rise through the career ladders, the positions available become fewer and fewer. And so you start to ask yourself, well, what's next? And then a natural progression came up because my company that I was already managing part of the business wanted to reach a new market. So they said, hey, Kai has the ambition and the knowledge to do all of this and we want to reach the German market. And I was born in Germany, so there was a natural fit. Except that I was born in Germany, but I left Germany and I was really happy in London and I had no intention to go back. And yet it was such a good opportunity on the surface of it that I started to prepare for that role. And fast forward 18 months from that decision, I left the company and the whole industry overall. Now, obviously not just because of that one decision, but it contributed massively because my decision was, here's the right thing to do rather than here is 
what I'm excited about. And this part becomes even more important in 2025, where a lot of the jobs of the future will be in the gig economy. If you haven't seen my video about the 2025 career skills, I'll link it down in the description below. But here's the best thing that you can do. Rather than preparing for a role, prepare for skills. Ideally, one that is very unique to you. Maybe you have a knack for explaining very complicated lawyer jargon in very simple terms. Or you know how to get the best out of grandma's recipes. Whatever it is, you can then take that skill and apply it in your company. But you can also look further. Where outside the company, maybe in your industry, is that applicable? Or could you even use that skill in other industries? And by that you are reaching out and you're building up a lot more options. And this habit of creating more options gives you a much better chance for a lot more autonomy and finding the role and the work that is truly meaningful to you. Now, all this learning and upskilling can lead you to another trap though. Number three, expertise hoarding. Now, it's a very natural instinct that we have that we want to protect our advantages in life. And when we build our career on certain skills that we have, it's natural that we want to keep those to ourselves. And if the role that you're in is perfect and it's the one thing that you want to do for the rest of your life, that's okay. But if you want to move forward at some stage, this is holding you back. Because now you're seen as somebody who is irreplaceable. Nobody else can do your job. And that prevents you from the growth that you are seeking. But if you find other ambitious professionals, if you share freely, if you ask for help, then you become the person who is ready for bigger things and others are there to take your place. So you are free to step up. There's just one thing you shouldn't do in that situation. Actually, one thing you shouldn't do in most situations. Number four, ask for permission. You probably heard the phrase, it's better to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. And nowhere is that as true as in business. I'm not promoting that you now go over the head of your bosses or make decisions that are not yours to make. But the reality is that we often ask for permission where none is required. Only to make ourselves feel good. For example, we may ask our boss, hey, can I lead that project where we can save 100,000 US dollars? Or I go to my YouTube friends and say, got this idea for a great video, should I make a video on this? And what we really think we'll hear is, oh yeah, that's a great idea. But what we most likely will hear is all the reasons why we can't focus on it right now. When I started my career in finance, what I really wanted to do is build a risk management department. But nobody had one and nobody wanted one. And every time I brought up the subject, even at the interview stage, I heard a resounding no, we need you to focus on X. But I didn't need permission. What I really needed to do is solve X for the company, which I did, and then use my spare time to concern myself with all the tasks that were needed to build this risk management department, which became the first in the company. So by all means, yes, ask for permission where it's truly needed, but where it's concerning tasks that help your career growth, do it and let your actions speak. And speaking about actions, many of us focus on this. Number five, we focus on technical skills that make us stand out. Technical skills can indeed get you recognized. They can get you attention. But they're also the most prone ones to get replaced. The World Economic Forum says that in the next year, 85 million jobs may be replaced by AI. Well, the same forum also says that 89 million jobs may be created in the technology industry. But here's the thing to notice. Those jobs that are eliminated through AI they are mostly technical roles. But the jobs that are created, yes, they're in the tech industry, but they require soft skills. By all means, yes, 
have this one technical skill because it'll remain your bread and butter and it gets you recognized. Absolutely. But don't think this will get you promoted. What gets you promoted are the skills where you interact with others one-on-one, -on -one, like in leadership or in the service industry. I'm certain that in 2025 and the years after that, we will see massive shifts on how we look at work. But when you are aware of the traps that we talked about, it's more likely that you are able to shape your future rather than the future shaping you. For more things to get ahead, watch this video next. Until then, take care.